So well, I know what you want to do. You yeah, want to leave yeah. like yesterday. Yeah, right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jerk. Okay. Yes, oh, we are ready. Room. Should we should we move this thing out of the way so we can? Thanks. Now we can actually see stuff better. Yes. Okay. You can't play with stuff during your interview. <laughs> All right. So today we're doing something that has been requested for a long time. Um, we've already Puzzle? done. Well, yes, yes. So okay. like when we first started our channel, we went through. <laughs> yeah. This is a precursor to how it's going to be. Mop? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just the spots that need it. And will you tell everybody I'm making a video so that not to come up? Okay. Thanks. Hello. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen all throughout the yeah, video. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Probably will. Um, no, so when we first started our channel, we just a few months in, we did an interview of each kid to introduce them and let them you know, learn a bit more about them because sometimes in a vlog it's hard to do that. But that was a year and a half ago. That long. Yeah. And so a lot has changed since then. And um, people have been asking for updates. And so I did one of Esther and I did one of Andrew. And now I'm going to do one of Elijah. Didn't you do one for Jude or is that? No, I'm going to be doing Jude's pretty do soon. Because when we did it the first time with Judy, didn't talk much. But anyways, here we are. Um, and so I'm going to ask you some questions and you tell me no lies. Okay. I might have to take some uh, true serum. True serum. Yeah. Something like LSD or something. <laughs> How do you even know what that is? <laughs> no, okay, so um, if you don't know, if you just happened upon our channel, I'm Megan, and this is Elijah, mm -hmm. and I'm his mom. Mm -hmm. He's my firstborn. I was 22 when Elijah came along, very young. And uh, he is the oldest of our nine kids. We are traveling full time and have been traveling for 20 months now. And uh, so people are always, always asking how our kids feel about it. So we'll get into that. We'll ask you some of your life plans and all that good stuff. So let's do it. Okay, first of all, how old are you? I am 16, um, turning 17 in August of this year. That's pretty far away. Because it's January. Yeah, but um, I mean, look, look ahead, you know, look forward <laughs> to me being older. Yes. And um, so I guess now that we've been traveling for a while, you probably have a different perspective than last time. You know, it was last time I interviewed you, we were just maybe thinking of doing it for a little bit and then going back to normal mm -hmm. life. And now we probably will not go back to normal life unless, you know, obviously things change. Or but before you decide to leave home. I mean, and move on to adult life. So, mm -hmm. how do uh, tell us about that? Well, that's a big question. Yes, it's a very big question. Um, I guess I I'm sure you get asked it a lot, though. Like, how do you feel about traveling full time? I really like traveling. Um, I like being able to see more than just my little inner sphere that I was living in back in North Carolina, or well, I guess wherever we lived at the time. And you kind of get the sense that there are other people in the world other than just yourself. And they all have their own wants and desires. And that's the same thing. Wants and like lives needs. and needs and all that kind of stuff. And uh, traveling does that for you. Gives you existential crises on a regular basis. It does. You're right. I just went through one, actually. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> and explain what you mean by existential crisis. I think... You, you you start to know a little bit more about your place in the world rather than just because because I think when we're when we're when you live in one place you you have your little sphere of friends and you're all very important in your mind and you don't really see that many other people. Um, you feel like you're the center of the universe. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you're the center of everything, which technically you are because there is no center of the universe and there is. Well, I technically am. Yeah. At least, yeah. I'm pretty sure. And. Um, <laughs> Nerdy and Nerdier. probably also nerdy, yeah. 
And no, but explain what you mean by existential crisis. I'm like, like you, you, uh, you, you realize how small you are and how little you are compared to the rest of the world and what it's, that's... So you kind of like know. turn back on yourself, like questioning some of the things that you thought were so important. Mm -hmm. Which questioning I think is difficult. And sometimes you still come back to what you believed before, but you definitely come back to it in a different way, don't you mm -hmm. think? Yeah. Uh, it's not like you abandon everything mm -hmm. you felt or thought, but you might come back to it differently. Mm -hmm. So I still window shop all the time. All the darn time. Elijah is a shopper. Yeah, I've been I've been doing it ever since I know, knew how to use the internet. <laughs> which what was like I was like two? It's because you are obsessive about things and you're a planner. And so then you're always shopping. So mm -hmm. um, some of the big shopping I've seen you do is... <laughs> especially lately. No, it's not especially lately. Do you not remember how much you shopped for bamboo? Oh, man. Yeah. When I was... How old was I? Was I 11, 10? Either way, I think we, we lived in Spokane, Washington. Um, and we had this little book. And it was how to build stuff out of bamboo. It was just this little cheesy book that had like six different things you could build. Not, not, nothing, or not very much at all. But because of that book and because I was a nerdy 10, 11 year old, I got super, 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 super obsessed with bamboo. And I wanted to buy some so bad. So, so, like really, really bad. I was always looking online. It was a terrible climate for bamboo. You finally got your hands on some that you felt would work in yeah. our climate. Yeah, and it didn't work in our no, climate. I, uh, I ordered some. Yeah. So Elijah's obsessive. Yeah. Right now he's obsessed with lenses. Oh my gosh, she'll like walk into my room like 50 times a day, I feel like, you, or wherever I'm at. You were a photographer. I know. And be like, now there was once a lens, 0.2 aperture. I'm like, wow. Zero, 0 0.35 or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, so you get kind of obsessive and so you're like <laughs> to of. shop. You're on, you're always shopping for things and researching new things you could buy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one part of Elijah, but tell me about your schooling history. People are probably really curious. You were my first. Yes. And, um, I guess I'll tell it from my side and then you can tell it from your side. When, um, Elijah wanted, was going to start school at age five, I wanted to homeschool him. Um, but we also lived in like a really, really good school district and, um, my mom was like, you know, homeschool him if the school district is failing you, but if you have good school, send him to school. And so... I sent you to Green Tree Elementary. Yeah, and you went to kindergarten there. That was yes. my elementary school, and he went there too mm -hmm. as well. And then you went. After that, we moved up to College Station, Texas, and you went to first grade there, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Then after that year, we moved to Utah, I believe, and we started homeschooling at that point. Um, we were doing this. We were, were we doing K twelve at that mm -hmm. point. We were doing K twelve, which is like essentially just school at home. Public school at home. Yeah, public school online at home um which was really boring yeah really really boring and we did that until washington really i mean well we we, we were supposed to do that until washington but we weren't ever really good at it um because we all hated it including her um especially her yes especially <laughs> her so then we started to pull together a bunch of different curriculums we had like remember life of fred we oh, had yeah. but anyway so we did all those different curriculums but still felt pretty terrible at homeschooling and like constant stress because I hadn't been raised homeschooled and dad hadn't and so constant stress that we were ruining you and then um well actually so what happened is they started adopting Esther and Pearl um and at that point they put us back once the girls came home yeah or right I think remember it was, right it was a, a few months before you left to go get them we got put back in school I was in sixth grade at the time went to public school um, from the middle of sixth grade all the way until the end of seventh grade, and then um, I stopped no, our public normal school again, and then. How did it go that transition back to public school? I think I'm really clashing with this background, by the way. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, like multiple patterns. I at first it was really strange for me, but I think within like a week I acclimated to it and it was just normal. Um, and I apparently I did really well. Yeah. I think. Yeah, we were kind of curious because we were terrible at all those different curriculums. It would, we'd probably get to those curriculums like twice a week, mm -hmm. if that. If, yeah. If <laughs> not. Well, like once a month, really. No, it would be like, we've got to do those. And so we'd do them and then fizzle apart. And then yeah. you guys were just like, we lived on a farm at the time. You'd mess around. 
Spoil the Woods. You, we had this huge Take collection of books. Apart. You read like read every books. book we owned. Yes. And um, so then he got in back in the public school, and I was kind of curious, like, how's he gonna do? And he was like top of his class. He took like the test um, for you know the year test you took right after you got in, just really a few months after you got there, and was like top of his class, mm -hmm. and in fact g grade levels ahead. And so I was like, mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. Even as terrible homeschoolers, yeah. it worked better yeah. than public schooling. That made me realize that, like, um, it's not as much about, like, the, the, the paper, the, like, the worksheets and doing this math problem over and over and over again kind of thing. Um, more it's just, like, like, absorbing stuff from, yeah. from those learn. You knowing how to learn. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, it was when we realized that and, um, as you know, everybody was in school, and it was we realized it wasn't really jiving with what we wanted with our life and the freedom we wanted, and how much we wanted to see you and involvement we wanted in your life. And so that was when we were introduced to the idea of unschooling. And I read some books on that. It seemed crazy to me. I'd like heard of it through the great friend. It seemed crazy, but I talked to Mike, and we thought, okay, we'll just give it a try. We'll pull them out. We'll do unschooling for like six months because even if it's like terrible, no harm, no foul. Like we can go back and do whatever. And so we pulled you guys out. You didn't go back after seventh grade mm -hmm. and we started unschooling, which really looking back was really what we were already doing. Yeah. We were. Just unintentionally unschooling. I really, really like it because it allows me to look up obsessively things that I like um, and just learn about a variety of subjects all, all over the place, like um, just everything, every little thing. And it's all fun because with unschooling, you get to, I think part of the fun is finding those learning sources that are the most enjoyable to watch and teach you the most at the same time. It allows you to, to find your own learning style and then keep doing that learning style and learn the most from that. Yeah. Well, and we like having Elijah as our oldest because I think he does a really good job of always being engaged and learning and doing and growing um so he models that for our, the rest of our kids good job so anyhow oh my gosh this shirt is like awful but oh well that's probably better right yeah sure. okay so um i also wanted to talk about what are your plans because people say like well what about college though and um are you planning on going to college or you know, when are you planning on on getting out of here? You're 16 and a, and a third, mm -hmm. maybe almost a half. Yeah, I think a half at this point. Um, oh. What are your plans? What do you, what do you want to do with yourself? So, well, I know what you want to do. You yeah, want to leave like yesterday. Yeah, right now. <laughs> um, Jerk. <laughs> yep, just want to leave. Up and leave. She hasn't let me, it's terrible. She doesn't <laughs> let me leave yet. We talked about him going to college early and I was like kind of on board for about 18 hours yeah yeah i mean you even suggested the idea and then i was like wait a second but then once he leaves I was home so excited but... he's like gone i i only get him like for this one period of time and then he leaves like mm -hmm. no yep. no you can do that another time you can go to college <laughs> i later. gotta wait until i'm 18. yes so at 18 um a little background we're mormon if you didn't know you probably do know maybe might not maybe okay well we're mormon and uh mormons at 18 we uh, or at least the boys go on missions, which is where we go out for two years, we preach the gospel, um, and I'm going to be doing that. Um, and the way that works is you send in your papers, like paperwork and that kind of stuff, and they assign you to a location around the world. You don't really choose at you all. Choose. You don't choose. Um, you can say, like, I think they ask you how much are you interested in, like, leaving the country? Mm -hmm. Like... Yeah. And um, how much Going do you want to stay close to, staying to home? In, in yeah. your um, country. And I'll do that. So that'll be for two years. Um, then I'll be 20 then. And I, th I what I believe I'm going to do is I believe I'll apply for a few film schools. I'm not sure at this point. Like, the funny thing is, as I get closer and closer, it seems like my plan is getting less and less um, uh, defined because... As you, I think as I learn more, there's, I just learned there's a lot more stuff that I like doing than, than just, um, it used to be engineering that I, that I wanted to do, but not anymore. But like now there's just so many different things. But what I think I want to do right now 
is I think I want to apply for a few film schools um, and for scholarships because the thing with film school is it's especially, especially, I'm combining words in my head that I'm going to say <laughs> next. It's essentially just an expensive networking party. Um, and like... Because so, you don't need a film yeah, degree to make films. That's like, not like a prerequisite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, Maybe and, it's just somewhere where you're going to go, learn some skills, meet other people, but the degree yeah, is not yeah. the goal. The, the degree does not matter that much to me. It's The, well, the reason I want to go would be to find other people that like making films um, and that w I could make films with. Um, so cool. you don't need a degree for that, you know. Hmm. And then I would... I think I'm going to move to Sapporo, Japan. Hopefully I'll be fluent in Japanese at that point, or at least close. Um, and I'll start living and making stuff and YouTube being kind of a, a precursor to that. Because like I've done, I've done small, short film sort of things on my channel before and I'm, I'm hoping to scale those up a little bit. Probably some of you right now are asking how I feel about Elijah becoming a filmmaker and living in Japan. Um, I don't really think about it because I know that we don't even know if that's what he's going to do mm -hmm. yet. Um, and I also know that whatever Elijah sets his mind to, he does. And so I'm surprised that he wants to be a filmmaker. If you don't know, I went to film school um, at BYU and um, I did not think he would do that. Um, he <laughs> Elijah, yeah. when he was younger, um, was very uncomfortable with performance. And so like one particular time we were at my parents' house and some of his cousins were singing a song for their grandparents and he like laughed hysterically through the whole thing because he was so uncomfortable with their performing. I was you were just like the most down. awkward <laughs> little kid you would ever know ever. No, you weren't. I, you were awkward, but you weren't the most. Well, it's close. Yeah, but um, so I guess I'm surprised, but you know, I like okay. film, so I get it. I don't love, I don't think that filmmaking is always the best f career for a family man because they're 12 hour days six week shoots six days a week or more um but i also know that whatever elijah sets his mind to he'll figure out and i also believe like there you don't have to do it that way do it however you want and make it work um so you know maybe maybe he would become a filmmaker in that sense or maybe he becomes a filmmaker in the casey neistat sense um, or a million other, I mean, in ways that nobody's done yet. So, um, I, in at college, I went to college, Mike went to college, our parents went to college, like our siblings went to college. Um, but my views have changed on that. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with my kids, um, choosing college if it makes sense for their life. Um, it's not a prerequisite mm -hmm. or it's not like just a, something we just know they're doing mm -hmm. anymore. I think it's, if it's a wise investment, you should go. Mm -hmm. I loved college though. And I loved BYU. Yeah. I'll be a little sad if you don't go and have that experience, but... That is the thing, I, I love people, so like, that's one of the main things that also draws me to college is I like, I want to be around people my age um, that like the same thing as me. That's why film school would be great, because we're all film nerds, and we're all the same age, and it's great. Um, I'm just saying BYU is great school. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, well, did I ever... No, he, Elijah Let's doesn't see. like to be told what to do, yeah, so he's never been real keen on BYU because I'm keen on BYU. Mm. But maybe, just maybe he'll change his mind. Mm. So, um, okay, so you're going to go on a mission, and then you come back. As you've told us for years, you're going to be married within, you know, a year it's, after your mission. It's pretty possible that I will. <laughs> I mean, just... just. He tells us for years, look like, at, looking but at then, Mom, now. you'll probably have a grandchild because I'll be married for about this long, yeah. so... As soon as I came out of my awkward phase, I went to, like, a million percent on all that stuff. I think you were still in that... I You were there in your awkward phase, I was. too. Maybe I was just, like, uh, afraid of telling everyone. Yeah. I probably was. Elijah wants to get married. Uh, yes, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I still have I still have weird awkward parts, but most, they're like really outgoing awkwardness. Like under here. Yeah, yeah, like going off into weird. Okay, tangents. um, so yeah. let me see. Any other questions? Where Where do you want to go most this year with the family? Um. What's your top? Well, I mean, besides Japan. Yes. Because. Yes. Japan. Besides Japan. Japan. Um. Let's see. Yeah. Um. Italy would be cool. Let's see. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't? Mm-mm. Oh, well, you, know, you do now. And, I don't know. What would be cool about Italy? 
I mean, it's just like Rome is so iconic. Um, just it's it's like it's a large part of like history class and all that kind of stuff, and it would be cool to see because like it's it's like when you think of ancient ruins, you think Rome. That's true. Um, is Italy and, and Greece? Generally, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, anything else? Um, nope. I don't think so. All right. Um, Elijah's always been kind of a lone man. He's always play played really well alone. He's always had his own vision of things. Even when he, I remember when he was like three, taking him to like play dates, and he would like say, Mom, no, you don't, like in the car, he's like, you don't come in. I go by myself. Like he wouldn't even let me walk him to the door. He's like, no, Mom, no. Or when he was young, I was so excited to be a mother and to sing my child to sleep that I just thought like, I, I you know, I'm not have a great voice, but I have a good enough voice. They're probably, and they, all the books like, they don't care how well you sing. They'll just love hearing your voice. And so I'd try to sing to Elijah. He'd be like, no, He'd cover my mouth. No, yeah, yeah. no mom. I was, don't, don't do that. I was, that was still <laughs> awkward face then. <laughs> and like, yet, you don't want to hear your Yet now, I like play guitar, I sing. I'm like, I'm like the polar opposite of how I was. Hey, it's so. <laughs> Are you saying that I get to sing to you now? Well, <laughs> um, so yeah, he's he's a he's a he's his own man, and so as the head of our family, you probably have to be just this crazy brood, you know, with crazy parents. Um, so that's Elijah in a nutshell. Still a youngin, but he's gonna get married any day now. Anyways, that's it. Well, you want grandkids, so I know I do. <laughs> she tells me to have like big fat grandkids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We love you. We love having you along. I'm sure there's a million things you wish you could know about Elijah, but he does have his own YouTube channel, Eli Nation. I'll have a link down below. You can go visit him there. He also has an Instagram, and he answers a million questions. He's done so many question and answers on Eli Nation. Yes, I have. So there's a good chance that one of those questions got answered on his channel. So you can head over to his channel, get all those questions answered. But thanks for joining us today. We love you. Don't forget to like and comment with more questions that maybe he can answer in a future question and answer. Or maybe questions you have of our other kids we can include. And don't forget to subscribe. And you can find us on Instagram as well and on Facebook. Love you guys. Don't forget to go to norpandsouth.com. Talk to you later. Adios, Bye. amigos. What's the thing you always say when you're going to bed? Oh, yes, me. Oh, yes, me. Oh, yes, me. Oh, yes, me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Me. Good enough. I mean, I don't know if I'm actually pronouncing it that well, but I, right. it sounds right to me, so I don't know. Bonne nuit! Yep. Stuck in.